Well, guys, good morning. Why don't we go ahead and get started? Oh, let's be efficient about this. You actually need sort of a collection of things this morning. So grab your homework packets. When we're done reviewing homework, I already know there are questions. Um, so grab your homework packets. And uh, when you're done with those, we'll leave them out because you'll have time for homework today. Then, guys, you're going to need periodic tables freed from your binders. Uh, you don't need your ion charts today, but you do need periodic tables. You're going to need calculators, and then you're going to need two clean sheets of paper. So again, guys, doing this again because I know it was a lot. Homework, periodic tables, two slices of paper, and a calculator. And then obviously something to write with. And we'll get going in a minute. Is it weird being in a different class? <laughs> yeah. Every class is a culture. This is mine, right? Yeah, I don't know. Well, so this is actually the schedule for our minimal day. And I printed it for Ellingford, thinking I was helping him, and apparently I wasn't. Because he was sitting there on Friday and didn't take it. All right, guys, I'm going to pull this together, and we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, so I know that Kyle came in this morning saying, hey, there are some things that I'd like to look at, but you said at the end of the assignment, right? So guys, why don't we let Kyle wait for a second. Let's start at the top. Um, questions, things you need to talk about. Picking your starting, well, actually, let's do it in order. Picking a goal, picking a starting point drawing a line, applying conversions that are fractions that are equal to one, such that they cancel top to bottom, doing the math by multiplying across the top, dividing by the bottom, and then rounding to the fewest significant digits. Things there at all? Okay. Well, then Kyle, it's in your court. Where do you want to go? The very last one. This guy? Go ahead. <laughs> what was the question? And do you what? What was the confusion? You mean in terms of like putting it in the denominator? Just a second, McKay. Is that what you mean? Yeah, and we should talk about this. Guys, you'll notice that the last three questions that we did, and again, we only did the odds, right? But guys, looking at the last three questions, these are these complex conversions where you have a numerator and a denominator that you're solving for. And so it's important that you not string this out like grams and centimeters cubed. Separate them so that you know that you're working working with a separate numerator and a denominator. Guys, frankly, if that's not clicking for you right now, you'll be okay today. We're not going to do any complex calculations today or on Thursday, but we will be doing these next week. So if they aren't clicking quite yet, you'll be okay for a couple days. Make sure you get help. Go ahead. Are you sure? Guys, are you really okay? Yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> what is that? <laughs> Sorry, I can't look at your face. What? Are you saying number, did you say 21? Okay, let's talk. Um, so, and guys, this is an important skill that you need to have. So on number 21, but on all of them, you're always rounding to the fewest significant digits. So our starting point, and I don't think we talked about this last, maybe we did talk about it last time. Your starting point will never be perfect. That's always a measurement, and therefore will limit significant digits. But then also remember that all of these conversions will contain a 1. And in this case, even our starting point contains a 1. And these 1s never limit significant digits. So we look elsewhere. So 20.06, how many significant digits? Yeah, why is that 0 significant? 
is trapped. So this would be 3, sick of writing with my finger. And then down here, we've got 1.6. That would be 2, and it's always the fewest. And so 2 would lead to 2, and that would be 13 miles per hour. Great question. What else, y'all? Are you good? You sure? Okay. So guys, what you want to do then is slide this homework assignment to the side, grab one sheet of paper, periodic table calculator. As you're doing that, you grab your phone. Hey Siri, remind me to record my homework before midnight tonight. And uh, guys, you get settled and we're going to get going. Oh, it did it again. I was... Oh, yeah, I was digging through my reminders uh, over the weekend because I'm way behind on my to-do list, and I had like seven remember to record your homework things in my reminders. All right, so guys, let me get rid of this. Again, don't forget to record your homework. Get rid of this and this and get rid of this and grab a hold of this. And here we go. So again, guys, you got two sheets of paper, you got a pencil, you got a periodic table, you got a calculator, and we're ready to roll. Hurry, buddy. Hurry. You guys all settled? Okay, so guys, let me lay out for you the way that today is going to progress so that you understand what we're up to. Because in about seven or eight minutes, if you're tracking with what we're doing this morning, you're going to have this really weird moment where you're going to look at the screen and you're going to be like, oh my gosh, you got to be kidding me. This is really cool. And guys, I know that sounds weird, but follow with me for the next seven or eight minutes. And I think you're going to be really intrigued by what you're about to learn. But guys, in order for you to get there, what you need to understand is the work that we've already done in this unit. So this is the way the day is going to go. Guys, we're literally going to page through the first two homework assignments that we've done this unit. And we're going to talk about how they relate together. And we're going to talk about why the first assignment that we did is actually kind of a mess. Then, guys, once we've established why the first assignment we did is a mess, we're then going to figure out how to fix the problem. And as we talk about how to fix the problem, when you see the solution, the solution is actually kind of really cool and magical. Now, guys, the problem is this. If you don't understand the problem, you're not going to appreciate the solution. So, guys, in the next seven or eight minutes, make sure you're tracking with me as we get to this point where we identify identify a problem, then we'll identify the solution. It gets a little childish, maybe even a little playful. Um, and then, guys, what you're going to see is this is quickly going to turn into some math. We're going to solve some problems. You're going to grab your calculators, and then you're going to have time to work on homework. You guys ready to go? Okay. So, guys, starting here. Don't grab your homework packet, but take a look. The very first thing that we did in this unit is we learned to calculate formula masses. But guys, there's a problem with this assignment. All of you last time said that you were being successful, adding up masses, coming up with these things. We talked about the idea that we were actually just going to write the masses up above the numbers. We were going to add them up, and we were going to come with, up with these digits. Now, guys, this is the important thing we didn't talk about. What are the units for all of these, uh, for all of these masses? What does U stand for? A AMU, which stands for what? Atomic mass unit. So, guys, we need to sort of keep that in our mind for a minute because all of the calculations that we did were coming up with these masses in atomic mass units. We're going to talk in a minute about why that's a problem, but for now, you just need to understand all of these calculations were done in atomic mass units. Then, guys, the next thing that we did, which is the homework we just graded, is this dimensional analysis assignment. So, guys, the question is this. What does one have to do with the other? And the answer is this. Homework assignment number two fixes the problem with homework assignment number one. Let me say that again. Homework assignment number two fixes the problem with homework assignment number one. But the problem is, is if you don't understand the problem with the homework assignment one, you're not going to understand why we need a solution. So guys, this is where you need to start taking notes. The topic for today, as I mentioned earlier, is the mole. 
And guys, we're going to go back and we're going to calculate another formula mass. So please, in your notes, do this. Figure out the formula mass for sodium chloride. Shouldn't take you long, but figure out the formula mass for sodium chloride. Today is March 1st. I'm embarrassed to say that my daughter this morning had me sign a paper for one of her classes, and she asked me if, yet, if today was the 30th of February. Of course I understood her confusion because she goes to public school. <laughs> Sorry, I shouldn't have said that. All right, you guys got the mass for NACL? Hey, what are we doing with decimals when we find these masses? What's our rule? One decimal place, right? So what's the mass of sodium? 23, 23.0. What's the mass of chlorine? It's 35.45 and change, but what are we going to round that to? 35.5. Then, guys, we add all of that up, and the mass that we get for table salt should be... 58.5 atomic mass units. So guys, let's pause and make sure you're all okay. Again, this is a skill you should already have. You guys good with coming up with 58.5? You all good there? Okay. Now guys, imagine this. We are actually going to go to lab on Thursday. But imagine when we go to lab on Thursday, imagine if we were doing a lab and I said, all right, guys, figure out the formula mass for sodium chloride. And then I want you to go into lab and using a weighing boat, put a weighing boat on a balance, hit re zero, and then grab, well, actually, you'd grab a beaker of salt. So guys, you're going to then grab a beaker of salt and I want you to weigh out of this mass of salt. I want you to weigh out what is equal to the formula mass mass of salt. Do you understand why that's a problem? Guys, I understand that this is like math to you, and you're just crunching numbers, and you're excited that you got 58.5 and you got it right, but guys, unlike math class where your numbers have no context, guys, we got to talk about this. When we figure out that the mass of sodium chloride is 58.5 atomic mass units, guys, how much salt is that? And can we weigh it out? How much salt is that? So say it again, Jessica. It's not 58.5 grams. How much salt is this? Because when we say 58.5 atomic mass units of salt, what are we talking about? So is it... This much salt? Is it a crystal of salt? Guys, how much salt is 58.5 atomic mass units of salt? Go ahead. It's not, <laughs> not yet. Guys, how much salt is 58.5 atomic mass units of salt? What if I show you this? Guys, this is not a, a crystal of salt in the same way that this is a crystal of salt. One little crystal of salt contains an uncountable number of NaCLs. So guys, when we say 58.5 atomic mass units of salt, what fraction of this are we talking about? Because we're talking about this much. When we talk about 58, bless you, when we say 58.5 atomic mass units of salt, we're talking about one sodium and one chlorine atom. Do you now see the context for these numbers? But guys, do you understand that functionally what that means is that these numbers are worthless to us in a practical setting? Because, yeah, we can figure out the mass of, of sodium chloride, but guys, when we're talking about this much salt, that number is functionally meaningless because we can't weigh atoms. Now, guys, if you're not sure yet what we're talking about, don't write this down, but watch. Guys, the idea is this. One atomic mass unit is equal to 1.67, don't write this down, times 10 to the negative 24th kilograms. So guys, what that means is that when you weigh out 58.5 atomic mass units of salt, doing the math, it's this much salt. And we can't do that. 
Guys, here's the deal. For those of you that are only going to finish general chemistry, the balances that you use in lab, they cost two or three hundred dollars, the one on the back wall, those only measure to there, two decimal places. Guys, when you come back for AP, I then allow you to use my two thousand dollar balances that weigh out to here. So guys, the very best that we can do in this setting when we weigh things is four decimal places. But guys, in order for us to weigh 58.5 atomic mass units of salt, we got to be able to get all the way down to there. And we can't do that, and therefore the masses on your periodic table are worthless. So guys, what I want you to do is grab your periodic tables and shred them. Don't. Because guys, bottom line is, do you understand why those masses on your periodic table are worthless to us? They're so small, they have no value. So guys, watch this. This is where this gets really intriguing. Follow the thought. Obviously, we're not going to ditch our periodic tables. So the question then becomes this. What is the solution to the problem? And guys, think through this with me. So make sure you understand the problem. The problem is this. 58.5 atomic mass units of salt is this much salt, and that's not very much salt, and therefore we can't weigh it. So guys, what's the solution to the problem? If we can't weigh this much salt, what do we need to do so that we have some salt that we can weigh? We need a lot more salt. Do you get the idea? Guys, follow this logic. If this is meaning, Tori, you got to hold still, girl. If this is meaningless to us because it's not enough salt that we can weigh it, then what we need to do is we need to get more salt. So, guys, and please don't write down what's about to come up on the screen. This gets a little childish. Bear with me. But, guys, the question is how much salt do we need? So, guys, check it out. Don't write this down. Just get a sense of what we're saying. So, guys, we've got number of particles. We've got the group name. And then we've got how much it weighs. So, guys, again, don't write this down. Just watch. But watch close. So, guys, here's what we've said. 1NaCl, that has a group name. It's called 1. And 1NaCl weighs 58.5 atomic mass units, which is equal to this in grams. And that does not weigh enough. And so we need more. So guys, you ready? How much more do we need? Well, let's do this. Instead of weighing 1NaCl, let's get some more. And let's get 12. 12 NaCLs. Guys, why did I pick 12? Because we know that 12 has a name. What do we call 12? If you have 12 eggs, how many do you have? A so guys, you're accustomed to this idea that this group has a name. 12 is a dozen. Now, you ready? Will 12 NaCLs weigh more than one NaCL? Sure it does. How much more? 12 times more. So guys, we're going to go 58.5 times 12 is 702 AMUs. That's got to be enough that we can weigh it, right? Guys, what does it weigh in grams? It weighs this. Does it weigh more? Yeah, 12 times more. But does it weigh enough? And the answer is no, it does not weigh enough. So guys, now let's get really crazy. You ready? One did not weigh enough. 12 or a dozen did not weigh enough. So guys, let's pull off the kid gloves and let's get a bunch of these things. You ready? Let's get really crazy and let's get 144. Because did you know that 144 also has a name? It's 12 dozen, but there's a name for it. None of you have ever gone to Evanston, Wyoming and bought illegal fireworks. Liars. Okay, I'll stop recording and now you can admit it publicly. But guys, when you go to Evanston and you go to buy illegal fireworks, they sell illegal fireworks in packages of dozens of dozens, 12 12s. Do you know the name of that? It's called a gross. So you walk into that fireworks stand in Evanston and you're like, hey, I want a gross of bottle rockets and they will hand you a package of 12 packages of a dozen. That's called a gross and that's 144. Now guys, check it out. Will 144 weigh more than 12? Yeah. How about more than one? Yeah, it's going to weigh more. You 
kind of childish, right? But guys, this is going to weigh more. How much more? This much. 8,424 atomic mass. Guys, certainly that's got to weigh enough, right? No, it weighs this. Not even close. This is not enough to weigh. So guys, check this out. This is where this gets really cool. You ready? So obviously what I just did was stupid and childish, right? If this only weighs this many grams, certainly 12 or 12 twelves, a dozen or a gross is not going to weigh enough. So guys, here's the question. How many of these do we finally need in order to have enough that we can weigh them on our balances? Thousands? Millions? Guys, how many do we need? And the answer is actually this. Ready? The answer is 602 septillion. One, 12, 144. Guys, not even in the ballpark. If you need enough NaCl so that you can actually weigh them, you need 602 septillion of these things. But guys, just like 12 is a dozen and 144 is a gross, 602 septillion also has a name. It's called a mole. How many things are in a dozen? 12. How many things are in a mole? 602 septillion. Guys, it's just like a counting group, but check this out. Guys, watch. This is cool. So 12 weighed this. 144 weighs this. Guys, what is 602 septillion going to weigh? More. How much more? Guys, check it out. That much more. Do you see it? Isn't that crazy? Thank goodness for smart people. Guys, here's what they did. They actually picked a counting group that weighs exactly the same in grams that one of them weighs in AMUs. And guys, this counting group is called a mole. And for those of you that aren't seeing what some are seeing, guys, this number and that number are exactly the same. The only difference is the units. So if you know the mass of one thing in atomic mass units, a mole of those things, 602 septillion, will weigh exactly the same in grams. Yeah. Beautiful. So you realize what this means. Your periodic tables aren't broken. It's just that these numbers are also in grams if we're talking about moles of these things. And that's what we're going to do. We're just going to change our labels to grams. And then instead of atoms, it's going to be moles and problem solved. Guys, you see the magic of this? Pretty crazy, right? Start taking notes again with me. We need to talk about this. So what's up with this idea of a mole? Write this stuff down underneath the, bre underneath the table. So guys, what's up with this idea of a mole? Well, guys, a mole is a counting group, just like a dozen or a gross. So wrap your head around this. If you have a dozen donuts, how many do you have? Twelve. If you have, a, if you have a gross of donuts, how many do you have? 144. If you have a mole of donuts, how many do you have? 602 septillion. Four. Three donuts per person times eternity. Guys, the idea is that the mole is a counting group, just like a dozen or a gross. The thing that makes it magic is it allows conversions directly from AMUs to grams. So guys, obviously this number didn't just come out of nowhere. So who figured it out? And the guy's last name was Avogadro further reinforcing the rule that says if you want to be a scientist, you have to have a cool last name. But guys, Avogadro's number is the number of things in a mole. Could be donuts, could be salt crystals, 
could be bicycles, doesn't matter. It's the number of things in a mole. Now guys, how many things are in Avogadro's number? Please don't write this down. But written out, well actually do write that down, 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. Or said it's 602 septillion. <clears throat> this is the part you don't need to write out. Guys, it looks like this. That's how many things are in a mole. By the way, guys, interesting question. How many significant digits are in both of those numbers? Three. Three. All of these zeros are not significant. So it's just the six, the O, and the two. Yeah? You'd have a mole of bikes. Yeah, and it's weird, right? Because if I told you you had 12 bikes, you wouldn't struggle to go, oh, it's a dozen, right? You just know 12 is a dozen. Well, if you have 602 septillion of something, it's a mole, just like a dozen. It's just a counting group. But when we apply it in chemistry, it allows us to convert from AMUs to grams. You starting to touch on this a little bit, y'all? Questions or things you want to talk about? You okay? Yeah. Uh huh. Any of them, absolutely. So if we know the mass of one thing in AMUs, we know a mass of a mole of those things in grams. And we're going to play with that more in just a minute. Absolutely. What do you think, y'all? Okay, so settle in for a second. Stop taking notes and check this out. So guys, we understand now that there's 602 septillion things in a mole. Here's the question, and guys, just sort of drink from this. How big is 600? You can picture 12, right? You can picture opening up your Krispy Kreme box, and there's your 12 little donuts. But guys, what kind of box are you opening up if you've got a mole of donuts? Well, guys, in order to drive this home, what I did is I sat down with my calculator last year, and I actually ran some numbers to try to help you appreciate how big this number actually is. Guys, don't write any of this down. Just drink of how ridiculously big this number is. So, guys, question for you. Right now, faster computers, and when I say that, I mean computers like my laptop. So right now, faster computers can do about 8 billion things in a second, which is crazy, right? But a computer can count to about 8 billion in a second. So here's the question. How long would it take my laptop to count everybody on the planet? So guys, how many people are on the planet? Do you know? Isn't it like seven to eight to maybe nine? So in that range, right? So guys, imagine this. My laptop can accurately count everybody on the planet in one second. Here's the question. How long would it take my computer to count to Avogadro's number? At eight billion things a second, how long does it take to count to Avogadro's number? What do you take? Don't calculate, think. How long do you think? Hundreds of years? Imagine that. I mean, and again, we're talking about an Apple, so it might run for a few years. If it was a PC, it would die before it got close. But guys, think about hundreds of years at 8 billion things a second. Not even close. Guys, the answer is actually 2.4 million years. To count to Avogadro's number at 8 billion things a second would take 2.4 million years. And guys, obviously that number's got a little bit of a wow factor, but the problem is, is that most of you can't envision next week, let alone 2.4 million years from now. So then I'm like, okay, we need to do something that maybe we can wrap our head around a little more easily. So I did this math guys, and it's a little poetic, forgive me, but what if we had a mole of raindrops? Oh, rain, yeah, okay. So, so guys, if we had a mole of raindrops, how many, how many raindrops do we have? Come on, y'all. If we have a dozen raindrops, how many do we have? Twelve. If we have a mole of raindrops, how many do we have? 
602 septillion. Guys, here's the question. How big a bucket do you need to contain a mole of raindrops? 602 septillion raindrops. Well, guys, think about it this way. Make a cylindrical tank that's 100 feet across. For reference, this is 33 feet, about. It's about 32 feet. So guys, imagine my room times three as a cylinder, as a bucket. Guys, how high would the sides have to be in order to hold a mole of raindrops? You ready? It would go to the sun and back 280 times. Hmm? That's fairly large. But the problem is, is that none of us have ever been to the sun. So again, it's a little abstract. This was the hardest one I figured out. I said, all right, what is something that we all share in common as, as folks together? And so the first thing I thought was airsoft pellets. So guys, these are airsoft pellets. Um, this is actually the leftovers from when my son and I used to have airsoft battles in our backyard with all the neighbor kids. Um, but guys, just for reference, when this was full, this was 10,000 pellets, okay? Now, the question is this. If that's 10,000 pellets, guys, what if we have a mole of these airsoft BBs? If we have a mole of these, how many do we have? 602 septillion, right? Here's the question. Guys, how big does the container need to be to hold a mole of airsoft pellets? So what about this? Would a mole of airsoft pellets fill my sink? Yeah. What? Yeah. Would a mole of airsoft pellets fill this room? Yeah. Would a mole of airsoft pellets fill the field house? Yeah. Now hold on. Think about that, y'all. Imagine walking in, imagine, just picture that the, the field house full of airsoft pellets. It's mind boggling. But guys, here's the question. Would a mole of these fill that room? And the answer is absolutely. So guys, then the question is, how big does the bucket need to be in order to hold a mole of airsoft pellets? Well, you ready? I tried to come up with something that we would all understand, and we all understand the state of Utah. So guys, in order to get a bucket big enough to hold a mole of airsoft pellets, we would need to turn the state of Utah into a Tupperware container. So imagine this, from Idaho all the way down to St. George, Wyoming and Colorado, Nevada, the entire state. Level the entire state, fill in the valleys, knock down the hills. Guys, if we did that, a mole of airsoft pellets would bury the state of Utah 253 feet deep. The entire state, north to south to east to west, 253 feet deep. You starting to get a sense of how big this number is? So guys, let's do one more. We talked about computers, but that was weird because that's a long time. We talked about raindrops, but we've never been to the sun. Now we're trying to picture the state of Utah as a Tupperware container, and that's weird too. So guys, let's bring this back to chemistry. What about this? What if I have a mole of carbon atoms? Guys, if I have a mole of carbon atoms, how many do I have? 602 septillion. But guys, the question is, how big is a mole of carbon atoms? And the answer is this. Guys, this is a mole of carbon atoms. Check this out. Guys, if these carbon atoms were as big as these BBs, these carbon atoms would bury the state of Utah 253 feet deep. So guys, here's the question. How did I know that this is a mole of carbon atoms? I didn't count them. That would take 2.4 million years because it weighs 12 grams. Guys, don't miss that point. Grab your periodic tables and look at the mass of carbon. McKay, this is exactly what you were talking about, and Sam, you as well. So guys, the idea is this. I know that this is a mole of carbon atoms because it weighs 12 grams. So guys, join me at the board and let's drive this home. Here's what we know. We know that one atom of carbon weighs 12 AMUs. 
And McKay, you ask, how are we going to represent this? One atom of carbon weighs 12 AMUs. Therefore, guys, one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams, and that contains Avogadro's number of carbon atoms. Do you get the idea? OK. So guys, if you understand that, let me now ask you a follow-up question. What about this? Wait for a second. Guys, what about this? This is two moles of carbon. I showed you one mole of carbon. Guys, this is two moles of carbon. Here's the question. What is this way? Let's do it again. If one mole of carbon weighs 12 grams, what does two moles of carbon weigh? 24 grams. So guys, this weighs 24 grams. Now, guys, and I know some of you are scrambling to write this down. Don't. You'll see in just a minute. I'll tell you when to start writing again. So, guys, if one mole weighs 12 grams, two moles weighs 24. Now, if you're not sure, guys, how did we come up with that? What math did you do to get 24? Just 12 times 2, right? If the mass of one mole is 12, the mass of two of those is, is, is 24. But, guys, what about this? How many atoms are in here? Is it still 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd? What is it? Double that. And guys, that math works out to 12.04 times 10 to the 23rd atoms, which is just Avogadro's number times 2. So we took Avogadro's number and we doubled it. Do you understand the logic? Because guys, here's the deal. What we just did are all of the mathematical manipulations that we're going to do for the entire unit. So guys, what we did is we took moles and we converted it into mass. And we took moles and we converted it into atoms. And guys, these are literally all the conversions that we're going to do for the entire year. So how did we get moles to grams? We needed to know the mass of a mole. How did we get moles to atoms? We needed to know Avogadro's number. And guys, this is then where you want to start scratching stuff down in just a second. But guys, the idea then, and this is what you want to write down, scratch down this grid. This grid will help you organize your conversions Make it as wide as your page, like three lines tall. Guys, this grid will help you with the conversions that we're going to be doing throughout the rest of the year. But guys, all we're doing is taking the logic that we applied right here and bringing it down. So the idea is this. In the middle, we've got moles. Off to the right, we've got mass in grams, not in AMUs, in grams. And then guys, off to the left, we got particles. So what counts as particles? Well, atoms, molecules, and formula units. McKay, I haven't forgotten about you. Well, actually, that's not true. I did for a second, but then I remembered. Just a minute. So guys, now the question is this. How do we make these conversions? And we've already made the conversions. When we converted from moles to mass, we just took the formula mass. So our conversion from moles to mass is the formula mass. And then, guys, our conversion from moles to particles is Avogadro's number. And so, guys, this table that you just created represents all the conversions that you are going to be doing in this unit and for the rest of the year. Because what we're doing is we're going to use dimensional analysis and do conversions in order to solve some problems and figure out some things about some, some substances. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, how did he come up with the number? 
No, it was way better than that. And uh, we'll talk about it only very briefly. So guys, McKay's question is, how did Avogadro come up with the number? I'm going to stretch you a little bit. Remember when we did that atomic history unit and we talked about Dalton and Thompson and Milliken and Rutherford and Bohr and all that stuff? And I know you don't remember, but Dalton was studying gases. And what he found out is that when some of this gas mixes with some of this gas, you get the same amount of gas back out, right? It's the law of conservation of mass. Well, it turns out that Avogadro was actually doing similar work alongside Dalton. They weren't lab partners, but they were doing similar work. But in order for either one of them to do their work, they had to be able to count atoms. And obviously that's impossible, right? And so it was out of necessity that Dalton came up, or that um, Avogadro came up with this number because it allowed him to count atoms in a way that he could actually do in lab. Um, and so what he did was they had already established the masses and atomic mass units, and he figured out this number experimentally, studying gases, so that he could then count numbers of particles, and that's where he and Dalton sort of pushed science forward. So, yeah, we're going to talk more about that in the last unit when we do gases. So, you guys good on this? We're going to solve two problems, guys, and then we're done for the day. There's one little curveball that's about to come your way. But, guys, what we're about to do is just like the dimensional analysis that we did previously. So, guys, right in a clean spot in your notes, write this down. It says, what is the mass of 2.3 moles of sodium chloride. So guys, the functionally the question is this. This is 2.3 moles of sodium chloride. What does it weigh? What does this weigh? So guys, in order to figure this out, Guys, we are going to allow dimensional analysis to drive the process. We need a goal. We need a starting point. We need a line. We need conversions. We need to solve. We need to round. So guys, what's our goal? What is the mass? So guys, all the way on the right-hand side, you're going to write down grams of NaCl. Do not just write down grams. Guys, if you do next week and in the next unit, you're never going to be able to solve these. It's got to be grams of what? Then, guys, step number two, we need a starting point. So what do we know about the NaCl that we can convert into grams? Well, the number of moles. So, guys, we know that we've got 2.3 moles of NaCl. Notice the abbreviation for mole. It's the saddest abbreviation in the whole wide world. Drop the E. And then, guys, we need a line. And now we're ready to do some math. The gang, watch. Let me help you think through this. So, guys, just join me and check this out. So here's the idea. Right now, we are in moles, and we want to convert to grams. So guys, I'm going to fly in the conversion table that you have in your notes. And guys, here's what you want to do. Situate yourself on this conversion chart. So we are starting in moles, and we want to convert to mass. So to do that, what do we need to know? We need to know the formula mass. So guys, grab your periodic tables, and just like homework number one, let's figure out the formula mass. So here we go. What's the mass of sodium? We've already done this. Mass of sodium? 23.0. Write it down right there. Write it down up above. Now guys, what is the mass of Cl? 35.45, which we've already established rounds to 35.5. We add those up and we get 58.5. But guys, what that means is 58.5 grams is one mole. So guys, what did we learn in the last, in the last homework assignment? 58.5 grams is one mole. So what goes on the bottom, the grams or the mole? Mole, cancels top to bottom. See how we're using what we learned last time? So guys, one mole of NaCl goes on the bottom. 58.5 grams goes on top. Now, moles cancels with moles, and guys, we are left with grams. So moles cancels moles, we are left with grams. 
Sorry, I got one click ahead. There we go. So the moles cancels out with the moles. Notice, guys, we've got grams on top, which is what we want. So now we just do the math. So we go 2.3 times 58.5, and that math works out to 134.55 grams. But now, gang, we need to check significant digits, just like we learned last time. So how many significant digits in 2.3? There's two. Then, guys, how many significant digits in 58.5? There's three. That means we get the fewest, which is two, which would make that 130 grams. Go ahead. No, so yeah, let's talk about that. So which conversions are infinite and which conversions limit significant digits? So let's talk. So in this case, our starting points are never perfect. These are always measurements, so that'll never be infinity. But what about the mass we got off the periodic table? And we know that that's not perfect because we rounded, right? We took 35.45 and rounded it. So our masses will never be perfect either. Um, really, with the exception of our metric and English conversions, none of these will be perfect. McKay, sorry, you've had a question for a while. Did it go away? My bad. If it comes up, ask. So guys, questions on the thought, question on, on anything we did in the process. So what we now know is that this flask right here, when it contains 2.3 moles of salt, is 130 grams of salt. You guys good? We're going to solve one more. So guys, the last one we're going to solve is this. How many molecules of water are in here? So guys, this is 25 grams of water. The question is, how many of these little dudes are floating around inside of there? More than 16. 18. So guys, if you're already grabbing your periodic table, if you're already grabbing your calculators, because you're way ahead of the game, slow down and trust the process. So guys, first thing we need is a goal. What are we solving for? How many molecules of water? So guys, our goal is water molecules. Now, guys, we need a starting point. And what do we know about the water? 25 grams. Then we draw a line. Now, gang, same deal. We're going to fly in our chart, bring this dude in, and then, guys, we need to find ourselves. So we are in grams, and we want to get to molecules. But guys, check this out relative to this chart. Grams is all the way on the right, but where's molecules? All the way on the left. So guys, this is going to be a one, two step conversion. We're going to have to go mass to moles using the formula mass, and then we're going to go moles to particles using Avogadro's number. Now, guys, watch really carefully. Don't this this is the one little curveball. You're going to learn something new. You ready? So, guys, again, we're going to go mass to moles, moles to particles. We need to know the formula mass. Now, guys, watch. Find the mass of hydrogen. What is it? One. one. What are we doing here, guys? One what? One point zero. But guys, please don't write. Well, do this. Now there's two of them, right? So that would be two point zero. But now, guys, watch. This is one little thing that you've got to think through. How many significant digits are in 25.0? Three. How many significant digits are in 2.0? Two, and that's bad. Guys, this is something new. Pay attention. The masses that you take off the periodic table cannot have fewer significant digits than this. 
So if this is three significant digits, this number has also got to be three significant digits. It'll never be less than a decimal place, but in this case, we need another digit because that doesn't have enough significant digits. So guys, the idea is that we don't need two significant digits, we need three. So what's the next digit? 1.01 .01 times two is 2.02. .02. So guys, let's reiterate what we just said. So the idea is this. When we're pulling masses off the periodic table, the numbers we get off the periodic table have got to have at least as many significant digits as our starting point. So if our starting point is three, our masses have got to also be three. So we'll always do a decimal place and then more if we need to. So now guys, look at oxygen. What's the mass of oxygen? 16.0, is that enough digits? Yeah, so that's 16.0 and that's enough. So now when we add these together, we get 18.02 grams is one mole. Guys, what goes on the bottom? The 18.02 grams or the one mole? Grams on bottom, moles on top. 18.02 grams is one mole. Then our grams cancel and we're left with moles. So guys, now we're in moles, but we need to be in particles. We need to be in molecules. So we draw ourselves another vertical line, and now we've got to go moles to molecules. Now guys, what's our conversion between moles and molecules? Well, it's right here, it's Avogadro's number. So one mole is Avogadro's number. So guys, what goes on the bottom, the mole or Avogadro's number? Mole, so one mole on the bottom, Avogadro's number of water molecules on top and the moles cancel. We're left with water molecules, so we're done. So now, guys, we do the math. Grab your calculators. Do the math. And, guys, you'll know that you got it right when you get 8.35 times 10 to the 23rd. Now guys, normally at this point in the year, I would actually throw a picture of your calculator keyboard up on the wall and I would show you how to do these calculations. And then I had a really eye-opening experience with my daughter who's a sophomore at Timpanogos uh, last week. I was helping her with her physics homework and she was showing me how she does calculations in scientific notation. And I was like, Jessica, that's absolutely wrong but she was getting the answers correct. It turns out that she was taught a different way to do this in her math classes, and I realized that if I was to teach her how it really should be done in your calculators, it would cause more harm than good. So guys, if you need help with scientific notation in your calculator, I would love to help, but if you don't ask for help, I'm going to assume you're getting 8.35 times 10 to the 23rd. If you're not, please ask for help individually, but I'm not going to muck with this corporately because I don't want to screw you up. But guys, if your answer is not exactly 8.35 times 10 to the 23rd, you either need to retune what you're doing or get help. And we can do that individually. How are you guys doing? You okay? So we're not done yet. What do we have to do now? Last step. Round to significant digits. So let me clean up my mess and checking significant digits. Here we've got three. Here we've got four. Here we've got three. Guys, Avogadro's number is not perfect. So that means we get three significant digits in our answer. Conveniently, that is already three significant digits. And we're done. No, 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 because H2O are molecules. It's not wrong if you do, but it's also not necessary. Yeah. Guys, questions, fine-tuning things you want to talk about? That tricky little bit about significant digits off the periodic table? You OK? OK. So guys, grab your homework packets. We are now on assignment number three. Guys, there are 22 of these, and we are doing them all. 
These will be due on Thursday. You have 72 hours to do these. Guys, 22 of them is certainly not too many. Um, guys, the answers are on our website. I will also print the answers. Do not try to solve these on here. That's why you grabbed another sheet of paper. You need space to organize. Guys, please ask the questions that you need, and uh, we will, we will uh, address these corporately on Thursday. If you need help in the meantime, please ask. Yeah. Yeah, let me come to you in just a second. Guys, anything else big scale? Okay, so let me stop recording.